and we get to some of my most disappointing reads in 2020. I only wanted to discuss like three books in this part of the video, but to be honest, I have written down over 10 books. Hi friends and welcome back to my booktube channel Books with Leo and welcome to my 2020 reading year in review video. I was like doubting whether I wanted to make like both a video discussing my favourites that I've read in 2020 but also I'm making a video where I talk about like my reading goals, some statistics. Not that I have like a lot of statistics but like I have a few <laughs> and I just wanted to discuss like some highlights you know instead of like favorites you've heard me talk about already and then I'll do another favorites video where I go more into depth into like my specific favorites and in this video I just shed some light on some books that I love this year and also I talk about some of the most surprising reads I've read this year and like about reading goals and like all sorts of things you know so it's just like a bunch of things in this video I hope you guys will enjoy it this year was a lot <laughs> I think I'm speaking for almost everybody on our planet Earth if I say that this was a very, very weird year. There are lots of things though that I've still enjoyed this year and I've enjoyed lots of books. But I've also really gotten back to painting this year. I've always been painting, but especially this year, I've really discovered gouache, which is like one of my favorite painting mediums because it's just so nice to use. And this brings me, such a smooth segue, to the sponsor of today's video, which is Skillshare. So thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. And on Skillshare, there are gouache classes, which I'm super excited about because I want to learn even more about this medium and like what I like some things that gouache is really good for because I mostly do landscapes, but I know a lot of people do still lives as well. So if you've never heard of Skillshare, they're an online learning community where millions of people come together to learn new things and it's mostly creatives and creative things. And so there are thousands of classes on Skillshare and these classes are on stuff like illustration, photography, freelancing, like all sorts of different things. So if you're curious or you just want to learn new things, this is the perfect opportunity. And if you're a member, you get unlimited access to all of their classes so you can try out different things, which is really cool. Video lessons and also class projects, which is really nice. So you get to hands-on learn loads of different things, like anything you're interested in that is on there. One class in particular that I've really been wanting to check out is Beyond Watercolor, Learn How to Paint in Gouache by Leah Goran, who's an illustrator. This fits my goals of learning more about gouache perfectly. And a fun thing as well is that the first thousand people to click the link in my description box down below get a free trial for a premium membership for Skillshare. So yeah, I would definitely go check them out and I will definitely be getting to those gouache classes. I've looked around on there and there's so many different classes on there that I want to see and check out and try and I'm like really excited. <laughs> Without further ado, let's now get into some book talk instead of art talk. Yay. <laughs> okay, so I've got my notebook here and I have written down some things in here uh, that I want to talk about. Uh, and I also have my iPad here for when I need to look on Goodreads so I can give you guys the intel. So I made loads of lists like in preparation for this video so I could tell you guys in the best way possible all the things I read and all the things I loved. First, let's pull up my Goodreads to discuss some stats. Not that I have a lot of stats, the only ones I have are like from my Goodreads reading challenge. So <laughs> I know like some people have these entire spreadsheets with like loads of information. I'm not that organized. Like I wish I was, but I'm really not. <laughs> so this year I've read 150 books in total. I'm really proud of myself, but at the same time, I want to tell all of you guys that you don't need to pressure yourself to read a certain amount of books, especially I feel like if you're on booktube, you can sometimes really feel like you're not an actual reader or you're not like that big of a reader when you only read like 20 or 10 or maybe five books a year, but that's fine. Like if you've only read one book this year, that's totally fine too. Like we're all valid. We all love reading. We all love discussing books. Like it's fine really. So I just want to make that very, very clear. And also for myself, I set my goal to one book and then I ended up reading 150. But like, I don't want to put that pressure on myself anymore. That pressure that's like, you've got to read a lot of stuff, you know? Because sometimes I feel like I do. Like I have to read at least 15 books in order for my wrap ups to be interesting. But that's like slightly ridiculous if you ask me. Anyway, so this totals to an amount of 35,735 pages that I've read in 2020 in total. Imagine reading a book that's over 35,000 pages. Gee, I, I read a lot of stuff this year. <laughs> okay, and the shortest book I read was In a Hunter House and Other Short Stories by Virginia Woolf, which was only eight pages long. You're all watching this like, yeah, I can read 150 books if you do it like that. <laughs> and then the longest book I read this year was The Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon, which was 848 pages. 
it was a brick. It was a brick of a book. My average book length in 2020 was a 237 pages. So that's really low considering like in other years it's mostly around like 300 or something. This year it was only around 237. So I did read a lot of shorter books. But that's I think also due to the fact that I've read a lot of um, graphic novels and comics and they're usually shorter so. The most popular book that I read in 2020 was The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy and the least popular book that I read in 2020 was an issue of Smooth Criminals which is a graphic novel series that I really enjoyed. My average rating for 2020 was a 3.9 so I'm quite generous actually but that's okay like I like a lot of the books I read. I give out many three stars where I'm like oh I enjoyed it but it wasn't like my favourite thing ever but like a lot of times I only give five stars if I both think if it's like objectively good and also it connected with me and I really really loved it and then everything between three and four I can see it's really really good but it just didn't like hit that spot within me or something. This sounds really weird and sexual, okay. <laughs> um, the highest rated book on Goodreads that I read this year was Heartstopper 3. No one is surprised, I love Heartstopper. And my first review of the year was of Sadie by Courtney Summers, and I loved the audiobook for that one. The first book I read this year was My Sister the Serial Killer by Oyinkan Braithwaite. This was a really cool book, but I just didn't really connect with it. I felt like the writing style was kind of dry in certain points, but at the same time, the story was really interesting, and I love like true crime, like thriller kind of narrative, so this was really cool. It's basically about these two sisters and one of them always kills her boyfriends and then she gets like a crush on the long time crush of her sister and her sister's like god she's going to kill my crush you know and that's where the story unfolds right and the last book i read this year was through the woods by emily carroll i just finished it this morning it's december 31st right now as i'm filming this it was so good. I really, really enjoyed it, this book. It's basically like a short story collection, but it's in graphic novel form. So it's like short graphic novel stories. And it is the most, cre it's one of the most creepy books I've read this year. It's very creepy, but it's mostly just very unsettling. But it's got this really beautiful illustration style and I really, really enjoyed it. Um, it's got many wicked twists and like scary things you didn't see coming. There's a lot of winter vibes in there. So it's perfect for like any time between October and February, I'd say really enjoyed this read, like a perfect end to this reading year. <laughs> so yeah, those were some of my stats from Goodreads. I know this isn't like super special or anything, but I just enjoy talking about this. Now let's get into my most surprising reads that I've read this year. So the first one I put on this list is Mary Ventura and the Ninth Kingdom by Sylvia Plath. I had never read any Sylvia Plath books before, like I've started in the bell jar, but then I put it aside not really sure why, I should definitely read it at some point. And this one is one of her first short stories that she tried to publish when she was really young, but it never got published. But then when she got really successful, it did get published in the end. And yeah, I, I love this so much. I never expected to connect with this book so much, but I just, I really, really enjoyed it. So that's why it was super surprising for me. It's basically about this woman who gets on a train to nowhere, she doesn't know where it goes, and she talks to another woman, I think, on the train, and then something really spooky and creepy starts happening and unfolding. I love how I always say the word unfolding, like, every time. It was just really cool. I remember I was painting. I was painting gouache, actually. Gouache landscapes <laughs> while I was listening to this. My favourite thing is making art and then listening to stuff. And because, like, I'm a freelance artist, I do a lot of that. So that's why I read a lot as well. Um, so, yeah, I, I really enjoyed this. Another book that really surprised me this year was Fierce Femmes and Notorious Liars by Kai Cheng Tom. Now, I have mentioned this book quite a bit on this channel. So if you're new, you might have not heard. But if you've been here for a while, like, yes, it's me talking about Kai Cheng Tom again. This book is based basically about a trans girl. It's like a trans girl's memoir, but it's also sort of fantastical and magical realism. And it's really humorous, it's really adventurous, there's lots of really endearing and beautiful, strong characters in there. It discusses many important topics and I enjoyed it so much. And I think I just never, I don't know, I just picked it up in such a whim. I didn't really know anything about it. And then it really hit home with me. It even made me emotional at some point and it was just a really wonderful, important story. So yeah, this was also definitely a surprising read and I've not heard anybody talk about this. Like, please pick it up. It was really good. The last most surprising read of this year I want to talk about is Get Alive Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert. I had never really, really, really enjoyed romance up until this point. Like, I read another book this year. What was it called? Right, I read Treasure by Rebecca Weatherspoon, which was recommended to me by Mina. And from that point on, I was like, oh, maybe I do like romance, actually. I was like, oh, I do like it now. <laughs> and then I picked up Get a Life, Chloe Brown, and I was like, yes, 
I like romance. I just need to have the right romance books, you know? I thought I wasn't into romance, but it turns out I kind of am. So that's great, actually, um, because romance is such a nice blend of, like, comedy and lightheartedness and fluffiness that I sometimes really need, like, a so feel-good. This book is about Chloe, who has a chronic illness, and she decides she wants to get a life. So she makes a list to get a life, and then she meets this guy that, like, is, like, the... Is like not the landlord but he works like for her building that she lives in and they start to work off the list together but they get like feelings but there's like complications and this book was so humorous the smut in it was really good and i just really enjoyed it and i didn't see it coming because i thought i didn't really like romance like i like treasure and then i was like okay so i kind of like romance now but then this book really hit home with me and i was like okay no i, I love romance and we get to some of my most disappointing reads in 2020. look i only want to discuss like three books in this part of the video but to be honest I have written down over 10 books in this list but I don't think I'll discuss all of them <laughs> anyway my first most disappointing read of 2020 was A Great and Terrible Beauty by Libba Bray this is a boarding school story written by Libba Bray about some girls who discover some magical thing and then I don't know they go tripping in some fields but like magically um that's literally what's happening in this book and i just i really did not enjoy it it was so disappointing to me because like i love the diviners and i love the way libra bray writes but this book just like it fell so flat for me and i was like did she actually write this like what was she doing <laughs> i really did not enjoy it another book that was a big disappointment this year was my plain jane by cynthia hand brody ashton and jody meadows I loved My Lady Jane, which was written by the same authors, and it's basically like they do historical retellings but very comically. Uh, it's like a little bit silly but it's super enjoyable and I loved My Lady Jane. It was like one of my favourite books of last year and this one just wasn't it. And it was so disappointing because it had like all the elements of stuff that I love. There's this girl, she goes to a school, like one of her friends can see ghosts and there's like a mysterious man and there's, so it's like boarding school, there's ghosts. These are all things that I really enjoy in, in fiction and still I hated this book. It was really bland. I don't know, I just didn't like it. <laughs> Another book that was really disappointing to me was The Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hartcastle by Stuart Turton. This is a crime, like a, a thriller book and it's basically a time loop thriller book. But then you wake up in a different character. Like, the main character wakes up in a different character each time he goes to sleep. It was super interesting. Like, the concept was really good. And the first bit of the book, I was like, ooh, I'm liking this. This is really cool. And that's also why it's on my most disappointing list. Because as it went on, I just started to get so bored. And it took so long. And, like, oh, I felt so winded out. And also, there were some passages in there that were so fat phobic i was like is Stuart turton okay actually like ha can we have that confirmed um so yeah i did not really enjoy that one last book i promise this is the last one that i found really disappointing was the past and other things that should stay buried i've loved a lot of sean david hutchinson's other books and that's i think why it was so disappointing to me that, that i didn't love this one um because like especially elena mendoza was one of the books i really enjoyed this year and that just really like Oh, I don't want to say this. It really touched me and like I really loved it and I've also really loved his other book We Are the Aunts and so it was really sad to me that I just didn't like this book as much. I think maybe it's also got to do with that I read it on audiobook so I listened to it and I think his writing style which is just very sarcastic and like a bit coarse sometimes really comes across better in like written text instead of like listening to it. So yeah kind of sad that I didn't enjoy it as much as I wanted to but shit happens i guess <laughs> okay so now we get to my highlights slash favorites list of this year i'm just going to start with like the highlights some books that i really enjoyed this year there's loads of them and i will mention my favorites like briefly but i won't get into them really because i'll do that in a separate video so just so you know <laughs> I'll Be The One by Lila Lee was a book I really enjoyed this year. It's about a girl who goes into a K-pop contest and she's a plus size singer and dancer. She tries to change like society's views on her. Uh, this was really fun. It was like one of the first contemporary books I listened to this year that I really enjoyed. And I think the main character is also bisexual. And I just, I really enjoyed like the fluffiness, but still like the important topics that were discussed in this book. Definitely a highlight for this year. Another one that's also a big highlight for this year is Slay by Brittany Morris. This book, I never saw coming how much I would enjoy it. Um, because I was just like, oh, this is going to be like a little bit like Ready Player One with like an online game, you know, and, like a world. But then there were so many important topics discussed in the book and it was such 
like it was so captivating I just kept wanting to read and I really really enjoyed that and a lot of the creativeness that was like put into the work it was really visible to me and I really enjoyed that another book that I really enjoyed was Art Matters by Neil Gaiman which is like basically an essay talking about how important art is and like how we should encourage art and like how we need funding for art um, and I just I really loved it and I love Neil Gaiman as an author really good it was really enjoyable definitely a book that's going to be on my favorites list this year is The Final Empire by Brendan Sanderson this was my first Brendan Sanderson book ever and I fell so hard oh my god I loved it I was like ah oh, I love it so much help me <laughs> it was so good it was so good I know a lot of people consider this YA but I think it's suitable for so many different readers and it was ah oh, I loved it won't go into it now another book that I really enjoyed this year was The Black Veins by Asia Monet yes i read this together with joel from fictional fades we did like a little well I, we didn't read it together we did like a video where we both read some of our favorite books and i read this one because it's one of his faves let me tell you i love this so much it was really good um i think asia monet is so good at characters and like banter and stuff and that's one of my favorite things another book that i loved this year was rat white and royal blue by casey mcquiston i know a lot of people don't like this book but i loved it <laughs> it brought me so much joy <laughs> that's basically it you should see me in a crown by leah johnson was also a book i ate up like the romance between the two main girls and like everything happening and it was just it was so cute and wonderful and like such a cute high school read another one that i definitely loved so much was loveless by ellis oseman I just love Ellis Oseman. And I also loved Heartstopper 3. I read that one as well this year. It was like my favorite so far in the Heartstopper series. Hi, sorry, my memory card was full. So if the screen is looking slightly different now, that's why. Another book that I really enjoyed this year was Before the Coffee Gets Cold by Toshikazu Kawaguchi. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. I'm so sorry. <laughs> this was a book that was just really cool. It was about time travel. It was recommended to me many a times in my comments and I finally decided to check it out. It was really cool. It was about this cafe where people went to travel back or forward in time and it really talked about relationships between people and I thought it was really beautiful. Um, Another book that I read and that I loved this year was Not Your Sidekick by C.B. Lee. This was a superhero story and it was so fluffy and it had a queer relationship in it as well and it was really cute and it was really diverse and it was so fun to read and it had really cool themes such as like grey morality and what it means to be right or wrong and it was really nice. I loved it. I like I had such a good time reading this book. And another book that I really want to mention in this video is Cemetery Boys by Aidan Thomas, which I read during like the spooky season, like Halloween, and it was perfect. It was so atmospheric and it was really wonderful to read about. And once again, wonderful friendships, wonderful people in this book. Like it just made me feel nice and warm inside and it was really spooky at the same time so that was lovely and then i briefly want to mention some graphic novels that i read this year that i really enjoyed because i've read a lot of comics and graphic novels as well this year so those are the last i will go over before this video is done um the first one i want to talk about is the blue road by wade compton and april della nocimine i read this one really recently i think i read it this month actually and it was just really beautiful it was about this girl called lacuna who moved to a different place because she was like set out of the swamp that she was living in and then she got to the city that was like so different from where she came from and so she's an immigrant and then all the immigrants that come into the city have to carry a mirror in front of them and they have to walk backwards because they always have to look into the mirror because if they don't look into the mirror they'll have like a piercing headache and so this graphic novel really had a lot of commentary on how we treat immigrants and on how equality is not the same as equity and it was just really really such an impactful read and the art style was really cute and really beautiful as well another graphic novel that i really really enjoyed this year was the prince and the dressmaker by jen wong it's basically about a dressmaker and a prince and they form a really unexpected friendship the art style is really really cute once again and this one gave me great like studio ghibli vibes i'm not entirely sure why probably because of like the castles reminding me of like all the castles that you see in studio ghibli movies and it was just really nice. I really, really enjoyed this one. So that was my 2020 reading year in review. Definitely let me know down below what were some of your most surprising reads this year or your biggest disappointments. I definitely also want to thank all of you guys for your support this year on my channel. It's been crazy and I'm so grateful for all of you subscribed to me and watching my content and enjoying my content. And I hope to be able to make loads more creative, fun content for you guys on here. So I can't wait. <laughs> See you next time.